Assalamu alaikum everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, a very warm welcome to you. Today we are going to talk about bacterial genetics. But before starting the lecture, I like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comments section. Have a cup of tea and let's get started. Bacterial genetics. Bacterial genetics is actually the study of genetic information. It is the study of how genetic information is transferred either from a particular bacterium to its offsprings or between the interbreeding glands of bacteria and how genetic information is expressed, how the genetic information, the genotype, determines the physiology of the bacterium, the phenotype. Here you can see the little cute bacterium. Bacteria have a simple genetic organization relative to eukaryotic organisms. They are haploid, usually possessing a single chromosome, and therefore a single copy of each gene. This is in contrast to eukaryotic cells, such as human cells, which are diploid, meaning they have a pair of each chromosome and therefore have two copies of each gene. In diploid cells, one copy of a gene, allele, may be expressed as a protein, that is, it may become dominant, whereas another allele may not be expressed, that is, it become recessive. In haploid cells, any gene that has acquired a mutation will result in a cell synthesizing either a mutant protein or no protein at all, depending on the type of mutation. Lecture outline, I have introduced you guys to the bacterial genetics, now we'll be talking about binary fission. It is a type of reproduction that bacteria uses for it, we'll talk about it. Then we'll look at mutations, conjugation, transformation, transduction, transposition and recombination. Let's dig in. Let's start with the binary fission. Bacteria divides by binary fission. Bacteria has got uh, its DNA in it and bacteria do have the uh, cytoplasm. Uh, binary fission actually uh, does what? It separates a body into two new bodies. The organism duplicates its genetic material or DNA, whose organism there? Definitely the bacteria, and divides itself into two parts by cytokinesis, with each new organism receiving one copy of that duplicated DNA. Here in this picture, you can see this is the bacteria, the parent one, and then we've got these two daughter cells. These are the uh, offsprings. This one uh, has got the genetic material. Let me draw it for you guys. It has got the genetic material. Okay, my drawing is not good at the moment. It has got this genetic material. It will duplicate it. Like, it wants this cell to get this genetic material and also wants this cell to get the same genetic material. So it will duplicate that into two and will also cleave its cytoplasm by cytokinesis. After the cytokinesis, this bacteria will have two daughter cells. Next up are the mutations. A mutation is a change in the base sequence of the DNA that can result in the insertion of a different amino acid or a stop codon into a protein and the appearance of an altered phenotype. Mutations can be caused by chemicals, radiations, or viruses. Chemicals act in different ways. Um, in radiations, you've got x-rays and urolites, and there are certain viruses that um, also play an important role in causing lethal mutations. Types of mutations. Mutations result from three different molecular changes. Number one is base substitution. It has uh, further got into two, missense mutation and nonsense mutation. We are going to talk about them in detail in a moment. The second type of mutation is the frame shift mutation. And the third one results from the integration of transposons and insertion sequences. The first type is the base substitution. This occurs when one base is inserted in the place of another. It takes place at the time of DNA replication, either because a DNA polymerase makes an error or because a mutagen alters the hydrogen bonding of the base being used as a template in such a manner that the wrong base is inserted. When the base substitution results in a codon that simply causes a different amino acid to be inserted, this mutation is called missense mutation. As you can see in this one, we've got the original uh, one as TGC and this one is substituted with GAT. I hope you guys are familiar with these bases, the adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine and sometimes for RNA it's uracil. When the base substitution generates a termination codon that stops protein synthesis prematurely. Prematurely means prior to the time it was supposed to. 
and this mutation is called nonsense mutation. The second type of mutation is the frame shift mutation. This occurs when one or more base pairs are aided or deleted, which shifts the reading frame on the ribosomes and results in incorporation of the wrong amino acids. We were uh, supposed to be reading something else instead of that, but it was aided as a new one. Like ribosome was supposed to read T, thymine bonded with A, the adenine, and after that again thymine bonded with A, the adenine. But as we've got the extra base pair, this the guanine and cytosine, so ribosome will read this after that one. So it will disturb the reading frame and will result in the production of the inactive proteins. The third type of mutation occurs when transposons or insertion sequences are integrated into the DNA. These newly inserted pieces of DNA can cause profound changes in the genes into which they insert and in adjacent genes. Now we are going to talk about the transfer of DNA. Transfer of DNA occurs within the cell and it can also occur outside the cell, which means between two cells. So if the transfer of DNA occurs within the cell, it will utilize a method called transposition. If the transfer of DNA occurs outside the cell, it will occur through the following methods. Number one, conjugation number two transformation and number three transduction first we are going to talk about the transfer of dna between the two cells means outside the cell and then we will have a look at the transfer of dna within the cell before talking about conjugation in detail you, you should know some important stuff the first thing is a factor this is a fertility factor or plasmid Bacteria having the F factor are F positive bacteria and bacteria lacking the F factor are F negative bacteria. Positive is for the presence and negative sign is for the absence. F positive bacteria has the ability to produce a sex pillus. We are going to talk about the sex pillus, don't worry. Okay, as in this picture, you can see this is one bacterium and this is the another. This has got this plasmid, this circular ring. This is plasmid, which is also termed as F factor, the fertility factor. Bacteria do have the chromosomal DNA, as you can see in both of them. This bacteria has got plasmid, so it has the ability to form this sex pillar. So it formed that one, and this is connecting this bacterium to that one. This is the direct cytoplasmic connection between both of them. So this one is F positive bacteria because it has that plasmid or the F factor. And this one is F negative because it doesn't has that. Now let's talk about the sex pillus. It is a tube between the donor and the recipient bacteria. Donor is the one that is going to transfer its genetic material and recipient is the one that is going to receive that. Sex pillus is also called as a conjugation tube because through this conjugation will occur. Pylon, a protein that forms sex pillars. F positive bacterium, the donor attaches its pillars to the F negative bacterium, the recipient. It makes a direct connection between both the bacteria. The connection is called conjugal bridge or mating bridge. Now let's look at this. This is the plasmid, the F factor. It has got certain genes for sex pillars. These genes will be translated and they will form a protein. This protein is the pollen. And this protein is responsible for formation of this sex pillus. Now let's look at this diagram. This is formed between the both. This is also called the conjugal tube. It is responsible for transferring the genetic information from one bacterium to the other. And it has formed the direct cytoplasmic connection between both the bacteria. Finally, we can talk about the conjugation. Conjugation is the matting of two bacterial cells during which DNA is transferred from the donor to the recipient cell. The mating process is controlled by an F factor, the fertility factor, the plasmid, which carries the genes for the proteins required for conjugation. The R plasmids. R plasmids, resistance plasmids, they can be transferred by conjugation. We'll talk about them. Conjugation occurs between two cells. Um, first, we'll talk about the F positive to F negative cell conjugation and then HRF and F negative cell conjugation. Now, you might be thinking, what is HRF actually? Okay, I'll tell you when we'll talk about it. F positive to F negative cell conjugation. 
it can occur in two ways either the replication of plasmid or after an enzymatic cleavage of the F factor DNA one strand is transferred across the conjugal bridge or the mating bridge into the recipient cell the process is completed by the synthesis of complementary strand to form a double stranded F factor plasmid in both the donor and the recipient cells after the DNA transfer, the F negative cell becomes F positive, and F factor is transferred, not the bacterial chromosome, in F positive to F negative bacterial cell conjugation. F factor is transferred, which means the plasmid is transferred. As in this picture, you can see we've got this bacterium that is F positive because it has a plasmid, and this one is F negative. Both has got this uh, sexual pillars in between them. This one was responsible for formation of that. Then what happens? Either the plasmid replicates itself or just cleaves itself into two and sends its replicated copy into that one or just sends its uh, strain, one strand into that one and that strain forms its complementary strain there and the one that was left there, it forms its complementary strain. And after that, both the bacteria has the plasmid, the F factor in them. So both will be now called as F positive bacterial cells. This is actually responsible for causing the genetic diversity between the bacterial cells. Uh, before talking about the HRF to F negative bacterial cell conjugation, we should know what is an HRF. HRF cell, the word HRF stands for high frequency recombination. Some F positive cells have their F plasmid integrated into the bacterial DNA and thereby acquire the capability of transferring the chromosome into another cell. These cells, as I mentioned earlier, are called high frequency recombination cells. As you can see in this picture, this is the plasmid, it has got genes for sexual pillars, so it will form that. And Sometimes what happens that this plasmid goes and integrates itself into the chromosomal DNA of the bacteria. So look, it has got the original chromosomal DNA, then it has got the plasmid, and this plasmid also has got the genes for the sex pillars. HRF to F negative cell conjugation. That occurs by the transfer of DNA between the HRF, the donor, and F negative, the recipient cells. During this transfer, the single strand of DNA that enters the recipient F negative cell contains a piece of the F factor at the leading end followed by the bacterial chromosome and then by the remainder of the F factor. Time required for the complete transfer of bacterial DNA is approximately 100 minutes. Most matings result in the transfer of only a portion of the donor chromosome because the attachment between the two cells can break. The donor cell genes that are transferred vary. Since the F plasmid can integrate at several different sites in the bacterial DNA, the bacterial genes adjacent to the leading piece of the F factor are the first and therefore the most frequently transferred. The newly acquired DNA can recombine into the recipient's DNA and become a stable component of its genetic material. Now the F negative cell has become the recombinant F negative cell. Here in this diagram you can see the plasmid will integrate its genes into this bacterial chromosome. It will now look like that. It has also got genes for the sexual pillars. So it has got the sexual pillars in it. So it will duplicate itself and will transfer. This HRF will now transfer this chromosomal DNA into the other bacterium. This one will integrate that chromosomal DNA into its own DNA, so it will become like that. Now both the cells have got um, the bacterial chromosomal DNA and the plasmid, and both have got the genes for the sex pillars. So this one was HRF, so it will remain HRF, and this one will become F negative recombinant cell because it was F negative. Now that we've discussed conjugation, we should know why we've discussed that. What is its importance? Why is it significant? It is important because of antibiotic resistance. If you remember, I told you about the R plasmid in the introduction of conjugation. Yeah, you remember, I know. That is the resistance plasmid that can also be transferred by conjugation. 
Our plasmids can carry one or more genes for a variety of enzymes that can degrade antibiotics and modify membrane transport systems. For example, our plasmids encode the beta lactamases for different uh, bacteria. In addition, they encode the proteins of the transport system that actively export sulfonamides out of the bacterial cells. Let me tell you an important thing that our plasmids can be transferred not only to the cells of the same species but also to the other species and genera. Let me give you an example so you guys can understand the significance of conjugation. As we've got this plasmid, it has got genes for beta lactamases. Genes on the plasmid, when they are translated into the messenger RNA, that will form a protein because enzymes are proteins, so beta lactamase is an enzyme, so they will form that enzyme. Beta, beta lactamases are best against penicillin because penicillin is a beta lactam drug and has a beta lactam layer in it. Bacteria with this gene will survive, but other won't. That's why I've mentioned earlier that conjugation is important because of the antibiotic resistance. It is responsible for causing that in bacteria. If in a petri dish we have both cells, uh, one has got plasmid and the other one has no plasmid, the plasmid cell will do conjugation and will um, develop the bacterial resistance. If, uh, if we put pencil in that petri dish, so it will develop antibiotic resistance against that bacteria that do conjugation. For ease of memorization, I've got a mnemonic for that, that is SEK. S is for Streptococcus aureus Ischerichia coli. Then we've got Klebsiella pneumoniae. The next process is transformation. Transformation is the transfer of DNA itself from one cell to another. This occurs by either of the two following methods. But before telling you guys about the methods, I should tell you that this process has got two bacteria in it. One will be harmful and the other will be harmless. The harmful will be responsible for the DNA, giving the DNA, and the harmless will definitely take up that DNA. Okay, back to the point. This process occurs by either of the two following methods. First, in nature, the dying of bacteria, which may release its DNA, or bacteria will degrade itself and this will definitely release the DNA. There's certain bacteria, we are going to talk about those a um, bit later, which bacteria undergo the transformation, synthesize receptors on their cell surface and that play a role in the uptake of DNA from the environment. The second process is in the labs, that DNA is extracted from one type of bacteria and that will be introduced into genetically different bacteria. The DNA that is released or that is released by a natural dying process or bacterial degradation or that is extracted in lab is called naked DNA. This DNA is released or extracted from harmful bacteria as I told you earlier. This DNA will be taken up by the harmless bacteria via receptors from the environment. This new bacteria will now synthesize the harmful proteins and these proteins are going to work against the host in which this bacteria will cause infection. Now let's look at this diagram. You will definitely understand this process easily. Here we've got this harmful bacteria. It has got its genes in it. Whatever this bacteria do, it is dying, it is degrading itself, or someone is extracting its DNA in the lab, will get its DNA in the environment, and that is called the naked DNA. That will be taken up by this harmless bacteria. And now it will have a mixture of DNA, the harmless DNA and the harmful DNA. This bacteria is like harmless bacteria with DNA from harmful bacteria. So now this DNA will do well. It will, these genes, the harmful genes will be translated into mRNA. This will definitely form proteins and those proteins are harmful. So, and they will work against uh, the host in which this bacteria is living. And this is how transformation works. The bacteria that are responsible for the process of transformation are SHN. S is for Streptococcus pneumonia. H is for Haemophilus influenza type B, and N is for Neisseria meningitidis. What is the significance of transformation? Why do we study that process? The experimental use of transformation has revealed important information about DNA. 
In 1944, it was shown that DNA extracted from encapsulated smooth pneumococci could transform non-encapsulated rough pneumococci into encapsulated smooth organisms. This transformation process gave us the first evidence that DNA was the genetic material. Before talking about the third process, that is transduction, we should know what is actually a bacteriophage. Bacteriophage is a virus that infects bacteria. And the DNA of this bacteriophage is called phage DNA. Transduction is the transfer of cell DNA by means of bacterial virus, bacteriophage. It can be generalized or specialized. A process called lysogenic conversion that occurs. Um, it occurs because uh, within the recipient cell, the phage DNA can integrate into the cell DNA and the cell can acquire a new trait. Let's talk about the generalized first and then we will have a look at the specialized transduction. Once the bacteriophage injects its DNA into the bacterial cell, it will undergo three things. Number one, it will replicate its DNA by using certain enzymes. Number two, it will synthesize proteins that will break down the bacterial DNA. And number three, it will utilize the genes to make capsids. Capsids are going to be uh, the future bacteriophages. These newly formed capsids will have the bacterial DNA along with the phage DNA. Then this cell filled with the capsids will burst. The, the releasing bacteriophages will have both the bacterial and the phage DNA. The bacteriophage will infect another bacterium. It will incorporate bacterial DNA into the new bacterium. This bacterium will then have a new DNA and the second bacterium will have a diversity of genes. Let's have a look. This is the first bacterium. This is the second one. Bacteriophage injects its DNA and undergoes three things. Number one, it duplicates itself. Number two, it utilizes this bacterial DNA to form capsids. And number three, it makes certain enzymes to break this DNA. This is the bacterial DNA. Then what happens, this cell will have the capsids, some of the capsids will have bacterial DNA, and some will have the phage DNA. What will happen then? This cell filled with capsid, this bacterium filled with capsids will burst and will release these capsids and these will become the future bacteriophages. The bacteriophage that has got bacterial DNA in it will inject that bacterial DNA into the second bacterium. This will be incorporated into the second bacterial DNA and it will become like that. Now this bacterium has a diversity of genes. As we've talked about generalized, we should know what is the specialized transduction. After the incorporation of phage DNA, it will directly incorporate itself into the bacterial DNA. It will not undergo certain uh, methods like it did in the generalized. It is specialized, so it will directly incorporate itself. As a result, the new DNA will synthesize capsids, and new bacterial DNA will also replicate. Bacterial cell will burst to release capsids. Bacterial phage will infect another bacterium. It will incorporate new mixed bacterial DNA. This one has got mixed, but in the generalized, some capsids had the bacterial DNA, while some were having the phage DNA. This DNA will then be incorporated into the bacterial DNA. This bacterium will now have a new DNA. The second bacterium will have a diversity of genes. This bacteriophage inserts its phage DNA that will be incorporated into that one. It will look like that. It will duplicate itself and will form some capsids. And then these uh, bacterial DNA will get into the capsids and these capsids this bacterium will burst and these capsules will be released and they will become the future bacteriophages. This bacteriophage having that bacterial DNA and the phage DNA will be incorporated into the second bacterium. The second bacterium has got its original bacterial DNA. It has the bacterial DNA from the other bacterium along with the phage DNA. So it has the diversity of genes in it. Certain bacteria undergo the transduction process. So for memorization of those bacteria, I've got a mnemonic for you. That is A, B, C, Ds. A is for group A streptococcus pyogens that is responsible for erythrogenic toxin. B is for clostridium botulinum. 
that is responsible for uh, producing botulinum toxin. C is for Vibrio cholera. Cholera toxin is released by that one. D is for Cornibacterium diphtheria. So you might be thinking that was starting with C, but you've written D. Yeah, that is for diphtheria, guys. So it is responsible for releasing the diphtheria toxin. S is for Shigella. That is responsible for releasing the Shiga toxin. Significance of transduction. Endotoxins are encoded by bacteriophage genes and they are transferred by transduction. Next process that we are going to talk is transposition. That is actually the transfer of DNA within the cell. It does not take place outside the cell. It is the process by which genetic elements move between different locations of the genome, but that occurs within the cell. Bacterium has uh, got its bacterial DNA, or we call it DNA bacterial chromosome, and it has the plasmid. Bacterial DNA has a transposable element in it. This transposable element has two parts. Number one is insertion sequence. For the ease of this video, I'll be calling it IS. And number two is inverted repeats. I'll be calling it IR. Transposable elements, I'll be calling them TEs, is a gene. When it is translated, it forms transposons. These are what is a transposon. It is an enzyme. Its function is to identify the transposable element and make cuts on the opposite ends outside the IR. Finds a particular target sequence that could be on chromosomal DNA or plasmid and insert the IR and IS in the center by cutting it resulting in a new DNA. Let's have a look. This is the bacterium. It has got the chromosomal DNA and the plasmid. This DNA or maybe plasmid has the transposable element in it. This is actually the transposable element. It has got this inverted repeats and the insertion sequences. What actually the transposable element do? It releases the transposons. These are the enzymes. These enzymes go and cleave this part on the sides of the IR, the inverted repeats, and also target um, a part in chromosomal DNA or in plasmid that is called a target sequence. And cut that one and insert that part there. And then the new DNA looks like that. But this one is the transposable element and this one is that DNA in which that transposable element is inserted. The significance of transposition. It is important in antibiotic resistance. We are going to discuss uh, one of its examples and also it plays an important role in enhancement of antibiotic resistance uh, by conjugation, transformation and transduction. This example will show you how is transposition responsible for the um, antibiotic resistance. Okay, we've got this bacteria that is a Kinococcus bacteria. It has got a gene that is VANA gene. It will be translated and it will form proteins. It will form certain proteins. These proteins are responsible for altering the peptidoglycan layer of the cell wall. If you don't know what is the peptidoglycan layer of the cell wall, I've got a video on bacterial structure. It, its link is in the top right corner. Watch that one, then you will have a good understanding of this topic. When this layer will be altered, it will be responsible for causing the resistance. Resistance is against vancomycin because it is an antibiotic that works against enterococcus. So enterococcus forms a protein that alters the peptidoglycan layer that affects the activity of the vancomycin in order to make itself resistant to that antibiotic. So we will call this bacteria now vancomycin resistant enterococcus. So this was how the transposition play important role in developing the bacterial resistance. And now how it enhances that. This enterococcus will release its V8 and gene and will integrate that into the into another bacteria. For example, Staphylococcus aureus, it integrated that one into that. It will also do the same. It will, um, this gene will be translated, then it will form certain proteins. Those proteins will go and alter the peptidoglycan layer of the cell wall, will lead to the resistance. And also this is against the vancomycin, which is an antibiotic. So now we can call this bacteria as vancomycin resistant Staphylococcus aureus bacteria. 
and this is actually antibiotic resistance enhancement process and this one is actually the development of antibiotic resistance now let's talk about the recombination bacterial recombination is a type of genetic recombination in bacteria that is characterized by dna transfer from one organism called a donor to another organism as recipient integration of dna into the host cell chromosome takes place through the recombination and enzymes involved in this process are endonucleases and ligases this process takes place in three ways conjugation transformation and transduction once the dna is transferred from the donor to the recipient cell by one of the three processes it can integrate into the host cell chromosome by recombination there are two types of recombination number one homologous and number two non-homologous homologous recombination in which two pieces of dna that has extensive homologous regions pair up and exchange pieces by the process of breakage or reunion and in non-homologous recombination little if any homology is necessary will be done and it repairs the double strands of dna the difference between both is that in homologous the we go under the process of breakage and reunion and in non-homologous recombination we undergo the process of repairment all right guys let's review everything quickly we've started today's video with bacterial genetics it's actually the study of genetic information its expression and transfer what is binary fission it is the asexual reproduction that divides one body into two organisms Mutation, it is the change in the base sequence of the DNA. Then we've got conjugation, that's the transfer of DNA from one bacterium to another via cell-to-cell -cell contact. Transformation, it is the uptake of exogenous DNA from the surrounding environment. Transduction, that's the virus-mediated transfer of DNA between bacteria. Transposition, sometimes referred to as translocation, it is the process by which segments of a chromosome are relocated through the genome. Recombination, DNA transfer from one bacterium, that is the donor, to other, that is recipient. It has got two types, homologous recombination, that is the exchange of genetic material between identical strands, and non-homologous recombination, that is the addition of a new genetic material to the chromosome. That's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You've learned something. If you really did, give this video a big, big thumbs up. Comment down below the comment section. And if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram, I've got my Twitter, and, and I do write some blogs, so do check them out. Till next time, Assalamu Alaikum.